Hey guys, so in this video we're going to discuss a topic that I've seen in my comments a lot as well as on Twitter. Over the past few weeks, a ton of big content creators have been talking about the skill gap between casual players and what most people refer to as the sweats, which are just players like myself and probably many of you guys who actively try to win games and improve their gameplay. If you even mention Fortnite to an Apex player or to someone who quit the game, I can guarantee you they'll say something along the lines of, Oh yeah, I stopped playing the game because once I'd shoot at someone, they'd build the Taj Mahal, ha ha ha. As unfunny as these jokes are, there are definitely some truth to them. It's evident that the skill level of the game has dramatically increased. One tweet that really caught my eye and got me thinking was from Noah J. After he got destroyed by a bunch of TTV by the ways and soccer skins, he realized that you need to make Fortnite a part time job to even play it casually. That's the part that I don't agree with and what the video will focus on because I truly believe that you don't need to play upwards of 5 to 6 hours to be a good player. And that's not even what he said, he said you need to play that much to even play casually. The tips and tricks in this video will help you guys disprove that notion by showing you a different way to improve in less than an hour each day. This video will also be helpful for good players who are currently at a skill plateau where they don't feel like they can improve anymore and they just feel like they're kind of staying at the same skill level. And the reason for that, as you'll see, is they're just not practicing efficiently. So as per usual, I'll put some timestamps on the screen now if you want to skip around or are looking to improve at one aspect of the game over another, like maybe aiming in particular or game sense. But I want to start with something that most people don't think about. My first tip that you need to change is your mindset and mentality. If you're truly dedicated to improving and getting better, and it doesn't even matter why you want to get better, it could be anything from you want to be a pro player or you could just want to be good enough to dump on your friends at school, but you just need to tell yourself and believe that you can and will improve. If you are constantly telling yourself, oh I can't improve because I can only play an hour or two a day, so I'll never be good, guess what? You won't improve, but it's only because you're preventing yourself from improving. Part of having this new improvement focused mindset is to start holding yourself accountable for why you're not improving and why you're dying in game. Stop telling yourself you got bad RNG. You should have landed on floor loot or gone to a better landing spot instead. Fortnite is inherently filled with RNG. If you don't know what RNG is, it just stands for random number generator and just means randomness in the game. Every time you open a chest, there's RNG because you can either get a gold scar or a green infantry rifle. That's the randomness. The thing is though, if Fortnite was as heavily affected by RNG as a lot of you guys say it is, why do we see Bizzle and a lot of other top players consistently winning the tournaments and skirmishes? In the Winter Royale qualifier, Bizzle dropped something like 40 points every single session. Stop blaming RNG and start learning to minimize it. When you die, go straight into replay mode and find out why. So looking at this fight that I died in earlier, why did I die here? Well, it's honestly pretty simple. I missed two pump shots and wasn't accurate enough while spraying my SMG. What did I learn? I need to improve my close range aim. Obviously, there will be bugs and things that are out of your control, but the best way to learn from these things is to blame yourself and not things that are out of your control, because again, that will just be a cop out you would tell yourself to hinder your growth. More importantly though is you need to act upon what you say, so if you're ready to improve and you're in the right mindset, you need to go and just do it. When I first started playing with my IRL friends on console like a year and a half ago, we all started playing around the same time and we basically all played the same amount. I hadn't played on controller in over 3 years, so when we started I was probably the worst in my friend group, but as time went on I quickly surpassed them in skill while barely playing more than them. The point of my story is that you can't improve by only playing squads or limited time modes with your friends and having fun. I'm not saying that you can't have fun while improving, but how many times in squads do you get into build fights? Maybe once every 2 or 3 games? You'd improve your building a lot quicker and in a lot less time if you just went into creative and practiced 1v1s. And you'd also improve your overall game a lot quicker by just playing solos instead of squads. It may not be as fun as goofing around with your friends, but if you want to get to the next level and improve, that's just what you have to do. This leads into my next tip, which is what you should be doing differently to quickly improve in each aspect of the game. So there's two major aspects of Fortnite, mechanics and game sense. Let's first focus on improving your mechanics. The main reason you aren't improving your mechanics is that you're not focusing your practice. You're just playing and thinking your mechanics will improve the more you play. Mechanics can be broken down into three things, building, editing, and aiming, all of which are important for improving and becoming a better player. By just focusing and honing in on improving each mechanic, or maybe only one for just 20 minutes a day, I guarantee you'll get better mechanically much quicker. You need to isolate your practice to that and only that, which you will see throughout all the drills that I recommend. So first, let's start with building. The most obvious and easily the best way to improve your building quickly is to just do creative 1v1s. 
Creative 1v1s are amazing building practice for people of all skill levels. The best builders in the world play creative for a couple hours a day to work on new techniques and to perfect their builds. For you guys looking to improve, just try to find a friend that is at your skill level or above it and ask them to 1v1. If you're like me and you have no friends, you can just go to FNPL Discord or to the Turtle Wars Discord that I run and you can find a ton of kids in there asking to 1v1. If you have a certain building technique or ramp rush that you're struggling with, like maybe 90s, just make sure you go and practice that. Or if you're not that experienced with coning people, just try to cone your opponent as much as you can and see where and when it works. Also, the best part is because it's a creative game and there's nothing on the line, you should try out some new tricks and things that you haven't done before in game. If you're too scared to do those cone jumps in game, well this is where you should practice them. Practice catching yourself in different spots or adding walls for ramps for protection because if you fall, guess what? You just start the 1v1 over again. Try to do creative build fights a few times a week for 30 minutes to an hour and you'll see improvement within a week. Next is improving your aim, which I found is either the hardest or easiest thing for people based on their experience with other games. On PC, my original viewers will know how much I love and recommend Kovacs. Kovacs is an aim trainer in the Steam store and I'm telling you, if you Kovacs for 30 minutes every day, your aim will improve insanely fast. I have an entire video that I made on the best settings for Kovacs and how to set it up, so make sure you watch that if you haven't used Kovacs before. But I want to tell you guys the three scenarios that I'm currently playing. First is Ascended Tracking V3, which will help you improve your tracking aim. This will quickly make you better at beaming people out of the sky or tracking people from long distance with your AR. You can now aim down sight with the right trigger to practice actually ADSing with your ADS sense, or you can just spray like normally with your hipfire sense, and my tutorial shows how to get both your ADS and hipfire sense. Second scenario is Tile Frenzy 180 400% tracking, which is the game with a bunch of cubes moving around in midair. This is a scenario I'm pretty new to, but it's really good for close range spraying with your AR and SMG, because it's 180 and the targets can be above you and to the side of you, which makes it more applicable to an actual game in Fortnite. Make sure to use your hip fire sense for this one. Last is Tile Frenzy 180, which you can use the shotgun crosshair in Fortnite for. This is the best practice you can get for training flicks and your close range shotgun aim. Remember to also use your hip fire sense for this one. It's fun and will help you get your aim much better and much faster than just playing Fortnite normally. Kovacs is only available for keyboard and mouse players, so for controller players, I recommend this insane map by Selage, which I covered in a previous video. It has a bunch of practice drills that are similar to Kovax, and all the targets are bots, so you'll get aim assist. I'll put the code for the course up on the screen now, as well as in the description, and you can check my other videos, as I have a ton of other videos on creative courses you can use to improve your aim. It goes without saying that you can always just play the game to improve, but the point of this video is to let you guys know the quickest and most effective ways to improve different aspects of your game. So if you're looking to improve your aim, Kovax or creative courses will help you improve much more quickly than playing Fortnite normally. Editing is the last of the core mechanics I'll cover, and luckily for us, it's the easiest to practice. There's a ridiculous amount of editing courses out there right now, like Slappies and Mongrels. The one I recommend is by Kanduk, who you guys might remember when Creative Courses first came out. A couple of days ago, he released three editing courses in Creative that you can practice on. I'll leave the code up on the screen now, but what's so great about these three courses he made are that they're all next to each other in the same Creative world. There are three levels, beginner, intermediate, and pro, so if you're struggling on the harder ones, there are easier options. I always recommend practicing on the hardest one because editing is all muscle memory and practice, so 15 minutes of straight editing practice will go a long way. To practice all three of the core mechanics, I suggest either playing creative modes like Turtle Wars or Storm Wars or just hop dropping tilted. The point of doing all three of these is that you want to get as many engagements as possible, and each of the games I just suggested will help you do that. If you play Turtle Wars for 20 minutes, you'll probably get close to something like 40 different fights, while a normal 20 minute game of Fortnite, you'll probably fight like 3 to 4 people max. So if it isn't already clear, my philosophy is just focusing on a certain aspect of the game and practicing only that to learn and improve quickly and efficiently. Now we can talk about the last reason you're not improving and how you will start to get better, Game Sense. So Game Sense is probably the hardest thing to teach, yet is one of the biggest aspects of Fortnite. You're struggling now because you don't even know what game sense is probably. I'll define it as just being aware of everything going on in the game and around you, like conserving your mats, paying attention to circle, utilizing your loadout effectively, and everything else. My advice for game sense is the opposite for mechanics, so if you're trying to learn and perfect your mechanics, drop tilt at every game and just push everyone you see. On the other hand, if you're learning game sense, land in a safe area like Junk Junction, just loot up and try to survive until the end. Don't hide, but only take smart fights like third partying two low opponents or when you have to fight someone who's engaging you. This means that you shouldn't just run away from everyone, as sometimes you'll have to fight people. 
but when you play to win, you learn rotations, you learn where to move on the map, and how to play end games. Only focus on your game sense when you're comfortable with your mechanics. If you're messing up your builds a lot and losing build fights in games, go back and perfect your mechanics before you start working on game sense. You can also learn a lot about game sense by playing in the new ranked modes, so even if you're not that good, you'll get matched up with players who are at the same skill level as you because they'll have similar point values. This way you can learn and improve your game sense in an actual competitive setting without getting clapped by TTV by the ways who have 500 rank points. Last tip for Game Sense is to just watch my series on it. I think it's the only Game Sense series on YouTube, and a secret tip is that if you use code Jerrion in the item shop, your IQ actually goes up by 100. I swear. Um, anyways, my final tip for the video is to just become a student of the game. I know that may sound weird and some 12 year olds about to type, HA CRINGE, but I'm being serious. When you have free time, go and just watch a pro player like Liquid72 hours and think about why he's making the decision he is. Why did he build with a cone and not a floor? Why did he rotate to circle so late? Why did he use rift to go on this rotation instead of saving it? These are all things that you should be asking yourself and then go back into his VOD to understand. I don't want to sound mean, but you know, watching someone like Lachlan roll around in a hamster ball is fun, but if you're really trying to improve, maybe go and watch a pro player's Twitch stream for 15 minutes instead. I think I'll conclude my video with that. I know not everyone wants to become a pro player, but improving at Fortnite is fun and is a good goal to have. My life motto is that you should always have a goal and every day be working to improve and working towards it, even if it's just like winning your first Fortnite game or scoring high in the ranked tournaments and pop-up cups. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. This video shoutouts go to Jack, Alex, Legion, Sean Moist 121 David Pearson, Vizos, FX Knight, Zyriax, Pax, Lucas Petty, John Paul, and Elliot, who all use my code in the item shop. Make sure to follow my stream on Twitch, as I'll be trying to stream every Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday from now on. If you're early while watching this video right now, go check my pinned comment, as I'll be streaming. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.